what's going on. Why are you so mad, bro? I feel like I'm being blinded by the light right there. I'm not mad. This is because I don't have any Botox right now. No, I'm I was saying at. you're mad because you just got threatened. Oh, yeah. You just got attacked. I had a message on Etsy from someone who just received something today. I don't accept returns on Etsy, but I always work with customers, especially if I make a mistake. But these are too small, they're too hard, it's a pair of shoes. Give me information to send you or send them back so you can give me a refund before I report you to my credit card. Whoa. That's not a good way to freaking start something with me because I delivered what you ordered. You not liking it does not mean you can dispute the charge. Go after yourself. <gasps> That's how that conversation's about to go. <gasps> anyway. Uh, so, guys. As you know from uh, the last, I think on, on our Sunday show this last week, uh, Vicky and I just went to California for a few days. We talked about maybe doing some videos. I filmed roughly 30 seconds and then pretty much decided to just enjoy our little vacay. So we have sure. like literally no footage from the trip. However, we did. Where did we go? We went to a couple places of thrift. Where did we go? We went to the bins in Santa Ana, which is in Orange County uh, in California. We went before. We went with our friend Jenna Harrington, um, who just had a baby, by the Aww. way. In case you happen to be home watching YouTube, Jenna, congratulations on the new baby boy. Um, it's like, a, if you remember, we've talked about it before. Uh, it's it's really weird. It's like, it's hard, first of all, it's weird. It's kind of hard to find because it's like behind like some headquarters. And if maybe you're not a, a reseller, you don't know that it exists. There's yeah. no way to find that. There's, and there's, not there's no signs. It's not, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. say what it is even on like Google or whatever. You see like a regular Goodwill and like some offices and then it's actually like tucked behind and it's, it's like out. Big. Yeah, it's outside. It's like under like a big open warehouse. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they also which have auctions, hot. which is hot and they're running hot. auctions next door They run auctions on the hard goods and the linens and things. This is just clothing. There's no shoes. There's no um, household items It's just clothing. Yeah, um, but it's it's pretty good. I mean both times that we've gone now Well, and here's the other thing they only put out like when they open the bins are out or all that's out for the whole they time don't Change it. So we got there at noon and you would think like oh going at noon You're not gonna find anything because it's not there's no they don't rotate the bins or anything like that so you kind of are like, did I miss anything that was good? Well, let me tell you, I think we both found some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you really found some good stuff. And then we also went after that. It is that, $3 a pound there, I will say. Yeah. It is California, it's $3 a pound, but we're not buying, again, not buying shoes, hard goods or linens. So clothing, eh, one to two pounds per item in general anyway. Yeah, so, and then we wanted to get some more stuff. So we went to this thrift store, I think it's called Save More. And we we had been there as well. And every time we go, I feel like we do find some some vintage stuff. I only got three things at that store, so right. I didn't really find much there. Well, I found some good T-shirts and stuff. And so uh, between, so we didn't really do a ton of thrifting, but I do feel like we came back with. I think you had like three or four bags of stuff. I had like two. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna go ahead and show you like roughly our top ten or so items. Uh, I think between, I have twelve. Yeah, I think I have like eleven. So uh, we're gonna show you, you know, just kind of the the best of what we found. Um, and you can tell, let us know, was it worth it? Yeah, I mean, it was just something, we only had one day that we could have done that, and it was, you know, mm -hmm. we had a late start to the day, we were just hanging out and talking and, you know, hanging out with our friends. Yeah. So anyway, one of the things I picked up was this cute little guy. I paid $1.91, you can see his little tag. He's a vintage L.L. Bean bear, and look at his cute little vintage L.L. Bean cinchilla. That's like the, his little <laughs> sweatshirt. That's what I got him for. Uh, so he's really cute. There are a few listed. Um, I'm going to list him for like 50 bucks. It's made in Korea. It might even be late 80s, early 90s. Anyway, the style says to me 90s though, the little, his little cinchilla. Didn't you say that this was actually on a different bear? It was. So I grabbed this bear. All I saw was his L.O. Bean tag. He was necky. And then, uh, this was on a different bear and I saw this. I said, oh, maybe there's two L.O. Bean bears. And it was on a different bear that had nothing to do with L.O. Bean. So I yoinked it off the other bear and put it back on this one and bought him. Um, and after looking this up, he, that was who he was supposed to be on in the first place. He's so. just missing his fanny pack though. Yes, they do come with, some of them have a fanny pack. Not all of them, but yeah, I mean, how cute would the fanny pack be? I didn't see that anywhere. Anyway, uh, I think I'm gonna list him for like 50 bucks. I bet you he sells on Etsy and not on eBay. All right, this first thing, uh, this is from the Santa Ana bins, and Vicki actually um, found this and gave it to me because she knows I really like these um, grandpa sweater cardigans. Uh, it is just a, like a nice brown cardigan. This is totally something my grandpa would have worn. Um, I mean, it looks like it's probably like a Lacoste or an Arnold Palmer. Yeah, so it's not an Arnold Palmer, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But most likely, 
No. Oh. Uh, I would say most likely it's not because one thing about the Arnold Palmer ones is they have like a little umbrella on the button and you can see this one is just a plain button. I don't know if it's not really focusing. Come on, son of a gun. Uh, it's just a plain um, brown button. I would say though, based on the way the style, the tag's not there, but you can see how it's like sewn in. I would bet this is probably like 50s or 60s, wouldn't you think? Mm -hmm. um, kind of like how they would they would sew them on like that at the corners. Uh, but otherwise, it's in great condition. I still think that I could sell this for, you know, 75 bucks. Um, it might I take would a little definitely while. look that up and see. Ooh. Ooh, there's a little tag. There you go. Might have the RN number on it. Ooh, it says Lord Jeff. Lord Jeff. <laughs> Uh, 100% acrylic. It doesn't. All it says on it is it's just like the. Or if it has the fabric content, then it's probably 70s. But Not it says that. Lord, Lord Jeff. Go ahead. All right, so this is nothing fantastic. I just got it because it's vintage 80s. Here's the tag, made in Korea. That's the tag. It says top side. Nothing fantastic, but gives you an idea of what 80s tags look like. It's just this sleeveless sweater vest in like black with this hot pink kind of pattern on it. I don't know. I love it. It's probably like 30 bucks. Vests and sweater vests right now are hot again. And that was from the bins? Yep, yeah, this was from the bins. So it was like, nice. you know, I paid like $1.50 because it's probably a pound or half a pound. Okay, this is from the bins. I would say this tag is most likely uh, gonna be early Y2K. Um, I grabbed this because it's like a skateboarding thing. I don't know, I tried looking it up. So whatever this is, is no longer there. But it says py piratical, piratical productions presents, and then it's got like some bands on it, and these are real bands. Um, and it says flyer contest winner, and it was Nips of Daddy No in Edinburgh, Scotland. But then the the, the um, poster is for an event at uh, in Santa Ana, California. So, but it's got the little skateboarding dude. But I just thought it was interesting. I don't know, it's gonna take, I might need to do a little research. Um, I think even at the, the smallest, I still feel like I could get like 30 bucks for it. Um, but I'll probably price it a bit more just because of the cool bands that are on it. But I don't know what this is. It's just kind of cool. cool. Uh, JFA, uh, The Outsiders, Joe's Garage, CD, CCD, and Media Blitz. But JFA is like the biggest one. None of them that I've ever yeah. heard of, clearly. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't know why I asked. <laughs> why did I ask? So I'm gonna say this is probably 80s. There's no tag on it, but it looks and feels like something from the 80s. It is this yellow, uh, like, snap front fleece. I love it. Uh, full, full snap front fleece jacket. It's got this little design on the sleeves and in the back it's hooded. And it says something, oh, it says, what does it say here? Sorry. It says North Shore Winter Surf Patrol. So, like, maybe it was something someone wore. I don't know that worked. Uh, that you know worked at the beach or something. This is know. like when Charlie Brown went to college and had to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of look like Charlie. I don't know what I'm going to price it at, but it's pretty cool. So I'm thinking like at least 75 bucks is my idea. All right, next up, this is another thing that Vicky threw to me at the bins. Um, these are sweatpants. I don't usually pick up a lot of sweatpants. I have gotten them in the past, but I don't do too much of that. Uh, but these are vintage, probably late 80s, early 90s on the Galt Sand tag right here. I do need to do a little bit of sweater shaving on these, um, but these are sweatpants. They have pockets and they are from UCLA. And Ooh. anything UCLA tends to sell pretty well. Um, I would think I would at least be able to get like 50 bucks, but I should be able to find comps and get an idea of like what uh, people UCLA have stuff really does sell well. Yeah, it does. So I, I, I mean, I probably could have kept those for myself, but I was feeling generous Aww, and kind, so and kind hearted. Um, I don't think that this is necessarily vintage. If it is, it's maybe early 2000s, but this is uh, CCM, which is traditional, makes hockey gear. This is a hockey uh, hoodie, hockey sweatshirt. See, it's got the little lace front, like the hockey thing. Um, and it is the San Jose Sharks. I was quite proud of myself that I knew who that was without even looking anything up. I mean, I'm not a sports surf, right? Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a good size. It's extra large. I mean, I think I can get 50 bucks for it. I don't know if it's vintage. Is that vintage? I don't even know. Um, I don't know. Probably, I don't think it's vintage. Probably not vintage, no. It doesn't have like a vintage-y tag, but it's that CCM is the, they have all the hockey stuff. So um, all of these things that I'm showing, I got at the bins. The only thing I got at that thrift store that I, that I got a couple things at was the, the Eddie Bauer bear, so. All right, so this is something I found myself at the bins, and I love it just because I, it's nothing like crazy, but I love the tag. 
Uh, look at this old school tag, you guys. It says far out gear. And it's such a, a 70s tag. Yeah, and it's 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 you know it's a it's just like a light sweater, but it's actually kind of interesting. It's got some texture going on, some kind kind of a pattern in it. Uh, if you look like right there, um, so it's nothing like fantastic, but I don't know. It's like to me, it's like oh, this is a little piece of history. Look at this cool tag. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I can get 40 bucks for it. What do you think? Maybe closer to 25 or 30. List it for 40, but you're not. You probably won't get it. It's very basic. Just saying. Go ahead. Okay, so this is made in Hong Kong with this cool Saturdays. That's the uh, the tag. Cool 80s tag. This is just a chunky knit uh, sweater. It's navy blue, but it's got like those different like confetti colors in it. Um, this is like a $35, $45 sweater. Nothing super fantastic, but I mean... You know, I can't leave this stuff behind. This is why I have 9 million sweaters for sale. It's true, it's true. All right, next up, I got this at the Save More thrift store. Uh, most of their stuff was priced anywhere from like $2, $3, $4. Uh, they did have a section that was like the stuff that they thought was like really valuable and it was randomly all priced at like 16, 16. It was weird. Um, but this is uh, probably 90s. The style kind of looks 80s, but based on the tag, I think this is probably 90s. And, and who do you think you need to give that to? Uh, well, you know I'm going to give it to somebody, and maybe sh maybe she'll see this video. But guys, this is like a lunch lady shirt. Um, it's a polo shirt, but look at it. It says, let's do lunch. So, of course, I'm going to give it to Kristen. Uh, it's with a little apple nutrition garden grove. Um, something, I don't know what the U would stand for, maybe United, but school district food service but let's do lunch like the podcast that angie and Kristen do that's cool. um and it says right here let's do lunch so it's kind of faded i think i only paid like two dollars for it but i saw Kristen the likes polo shirts though Kristen's very sportsy yeah, yeah. and it says she let's do lunch i mean she might wear it just once just yeah whatever you know, to make i'm point. fine with that um okay so i picked this up in the bins this is just a pink uh kind of a boho uh Dress again. I like these little dresses that are probably the type of dresses that you would find on a holiday somewhere. It is a uh, halter neck with the knit over it, and then it has this um, this ruched. What is this Ooh. called? Um, this elastic back right here. So it's multiple sizes, and it's in this nice hot pink color. Uh, I did sell one in black like this this last month for about $45, so I'll probably price this very similarly. It is vintage, but it's not super old. Like, this is like 90s-ish. It's made to look older. It definitely has a boho feel. This has some spotting on it. I'm just going to throw it right in the washing machine and let it rip. All right. Uh, you guys know how I love my Jesus tees. This is a uh, 90s t-shirt. It actually has the date on it. It says 96. Um, it is on the Fruit of a Loom tag right there, as you can see. Uh, this one says, uh, Made in USA. Oh, so it is actually Made in USA. It's single stitch. And as you can see, it's got a bear on the front of it. And it says, Jesus loves me this much. You silly, Aww. you silly bear. Um, it's really cute. It's a super soft shirt. Like I said, single stitch. I love it. I'll probably price this at like um, 70 and hope to get 50 for it. That's kind of a lot, but I always price my Jesus stuff up a little bit higher. And you know what? I find the Jesus stuff and I can't give the crap away. I think I only sold one. I'd buy them. Sorry about it. I usually give, give it all to me. Seriously, I really should. Okay, so I actually lied. I did get this at the other store. So I paid $2.97 for this. They staple every, all the tags on. It's I don't really like, annoying. I don't like the stapling. Okay, so this is a vintage 70s Contempo Casuals. Those of us in this age bracket will remember that as being a fun mall brand in the 80s and 90s. Uh, but this is a 70s tag. And this is just a polyester, it's women's. It's a polyester shirt in dark green with like, you know, burgundy flowers. But what it has is this super cool dagger collar. Look at that. Look at that big pointed collar, spread collar. Uh, it's a small size, it's probably a size small. Uh, but I'll list it and get, you know, somewhere around 40 or $50 for it. 70s disco polyester spread dagger collar. Those are all col uh, words I'd be using in the title. I like it, I like it. All right, next up, this was also from the Save More Thrift Store. Um, this is really interesting. I'm assuming it's probably 90s. It is double stitch, but it's got this like extra wide collar. 
and uh, the tag is Dream USA, even though it's made in China. Um, but I need to do a little research on this because I don't know what exactly it's from. So the back of it says Korea National Baseball Team Supporters. Um, and then the front has like this, these kind of like these eyes and it says, I'm not sure what that is, if it's P-A-D-O, I don't know, Korea National Baseball Team Supporters. So just kind of a cool shirt. It's really heavy. It's got a very 90s feel to it, the construction and the, the type of fabric. Um, but I just thought it was interesting and cool and probably not something that there's a lot of out there. So I should be able to sell it for uh, probably 50 bucks. Hmm. Okay, so this is a made in Hong Kong vintage Nautica robe. You can tell Katie's talked about this before. Nautica, when it's all lowercase like this, is vintage when it's all capitals it is the more current uh, although some of that may be getting into vintage territory Tory at this point now as well i love that uh, this is just a one size fits all blue and white striped cotton robe it's so weird it doesn't have a belt i buy robes without belts all the time but i will also say i buy belts without robes all the time if i find solid colored belts in the bins i grab them because i will repurpose them in <laughs> uh, robes yeah grizz agrees um, but what I liked is that, look at this cool sleeve hit. It's got this little Nautica rigger type thing on the sleeve. But this is made in Hong Kong, so this is probably 80s Nautica. Um, I, what I will do is I'm gonna take a, probably a navy blue or a white um, ribbon, and that's what I use as belts a lot when I don't have a belt for a robe. And I just say, I've replaced the, the robe belt is missing, I've replaced it with a ribbon works fine. Like I buy like the one inch or two inch thick ribbon and I buy them in solid colors that are um, popular like navy blue, white, black, red. And I tend to use those. The only thing that doesn't work for is those big heavy terry cloth robes and those you want to just grab solid terry cloth belts when you see them. They're, mm -hmm. they're a dime a dozen in the fence. All right next up, so this is not vintage, this is from 2012. This is, uh, it says United States Olympic Committee Team Apparel. You can see right there um, and on the front it is uh, United States Olympic team Olympic trials gymnastics San Jose California so again 2012 um, but what's super interesting about this first of all the back's really filthy uh, it looks just it looks like it's got a bunch of dirt on it so that'll wash out um, but it's signed so I don't know who signed this. So that's why I need your guys' help because I'm trying to figure out. So if you are somebody who's super into gymnastics, like I don't know if this is somebody that's more of a current or current at the time in 2012, or if it's somebody who was a big gymnast prior that was just at those tryouts and maybe signed like somebody's shirt. Simone. I don't know. It's an S. It's an S. Yeah, so please guys, in the comments down below, tell me what your best guess is for who might have signed this because that will hopefully determine Ten if this has... Ago. If this has more value to it, um, it could be really cool. But I always like Olympic stuff, and it, it could be super hit or miss. Sometimes it sells for a lot, and sometimes it sells for a little. But with that signature, if it's somebody super cool, could yeah, be. Yeah, it's not like it's a fake signature. It's not <laughs> like you need, again, let me just talk about people saying you can't say something's a signature without getting a PSA or authentication. There are certain people that are not forging signatures on certain things. That's something that nobody is faking a signature on because who cares? I think if you're listing in California, isn't there something where you have to have a, a COA? I actually um, don't know. But what I usually- in California. Yeah, so. anytime I have something that's signed, I do say in my little condition notes, I do say there is no COA. Like, just to put right, it out there. Right. So uh, this is the type of find that I would have loved to have found two, three years ago that I never found in the wild. And I used to always joke about it, especially with Allison and Katie. But uh, how is this that four hours after the bins opened, this was still there? That's the thing. I don't even care that they don't sell for quite as much anymore. They still sell. Uh, so this is a vintage, probably 80s uh, Pendleton uh, board shirt. Here's the tag. Sorry, as I'm getting closer, it gets dark instead of uh, focusing. It is a board shirt. It is a Pendleton plaid. It's this great teal blue, like shadow plaid, which I love. Um, and again, board shirt, here's a few tips for how you can tell what it is. The board shirt is always gonna have the loop on the collar right here. It is also going to have the no, uh, like the rounded corner or flat corner pockets with no button. So let me show what that looks like on the front of the shirt. Sorry, it's getting dark, so it's not showing it. Um, there you go. And then the other thing is it's not going to have shirt tails. It's going to be straight across the hem on the bottom. It's not meant to be tucked in. It's not meant to be tucked in. It's meant to be worn. 
outside. These are all things I actually learned from Katie, even though I love Pendleton, I did not know this stuff about board shirts before we met. Now, it does have a couple of moth holes. You can see them right there. I think you may be able to see them uh, in the back. I don't let that dissuade me because honestly, first of all, Pendleton is scratchy. Most people are not wearing this without a shirt under it. They're gonna wear it as like a little shacket type thing. Um, so you're just not gonna be able to see it. It's a couple little holes right in the back. I'll, I think I'll price it. It's small. It actually says it's a size medium. It definitely looks like a size medium. It has not been shrunken at all, but I will probably price it at like 75. Two or three years ago, this would have sold for like 175. Again, this is how the markets change, but it's still worth picking up obviously for two, three dollars. Yep. Okay, so we just got a couple of things left. Uh, so I had said that at the Save More thrift store, they had a section for like stuff that they thought was more valuable and they had priced up. And one of the things they had was a really cool Wrangler Western shirt with pearl snap buttons, but it was priced at $16.16. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not paying that. Um, and so then I was looking through some other shirts and I found another Wrangler Western shirt with pearl snap buttons, but this was priced more normally. I think it was like four bucks. Uh, but this is like a 90s early Y2K Wrangler Western shirt. Um, and you can see it's got the really cool pearl snap buttons. Um, and it's, it's a really nice, bright, vibrant blue. Uh, so I think I should be able to get like at least $50 for this. Uh, 40 to 50 for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice one. All right, go ahead. Um, I actually just have three more things to show you. Uh, I think Katie only has one, so sorry. If you want me to double up, I will. I have two. You have two? Okay. Um, this brand, I've talked about this before, it's like unique vintage, collective clothing. This is what it, the brand looks like. It is mod cloth, collective, that type of thing. These are the online brands of clothing that cater to people that like vintage styles. So it's retro clothing. Um, this is actually a new without tags dress. It still has some of the uh, remnants of the tags on it. It has not been worn, again, in the bins, four or five hours after they opened. Uh, but it is a, it's just kind of like a celestial theme. I love it. It's super pretty. If this were actually my size, I would probably have kept it. It's star charts. Uh, yeah, it's star charts. Uh, it's just really pretty. It's, it's celestial and astrological. And of course, these are words I'm going to use in the title. But this dress sold new for around $100. Um, and when they retired the collections or when they're not available on the website anymore, you can generally get things for a good price for them. Um, if this were a plus size, I would, get, I would get at least $75 to $85 for it. It is a size six. I expect to get at least 50 for it though. Nice. And it's very lightweight. It weighs less than a pound, so. Very nice. Okay, next up for me, again, this is from the Save More thrift store. And this is actually the first t-shirt I found when I was looking in the t-shirts. Um, and I first thing I saw was the tag and I was like, heck yeah. And I knew that this tag is generally late 80s, you'll see it sometimes on early 90s stuff. And sure enough, uh, this one is uh, dated 1990. And it, I've had this shirt before. This is a really, um, really fun uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center. Um, and you see it's the launching of a of the space shuttle. It's just a really cool shirt. This is in great condition. It's got the print is is a little bit a little bit puffy there. And you can see right here it says 1990. Um, it is single stitch all around. This is size XL and it really does look like it's an XL. So that is really cool as well. It's not like a super slim uh, shrunken down version of an XL you, you a lot of times get in the 80s and 90s. Um, so yeah, I was pretty excited about it. This, I literally, it was like $1.97 or whatever their price points are. Um, That's a cool shirt. Yeah, and uh, I should be able to get like 50 bucks for it. It's not like gonna sell for a bazillion dollars. Okay, so this I actually grabbed when we were on our way out the door at the bins. I saw somebody either toss it back or it ended up on the top, but this is a vintage velvet kind of like wiggle dress with this cage style neckline. It's all velvet, it's long sleeved, it's a sheath dress. I just saw that it was velvet and then I saw this tag, which is in French. Um, I looked this up and there's not a ton offered on um, you know, eBay.us, but I think this is still vintage 90s Y2K type of brand, but it is a French brand. And again, this was super lightweight. The ones that are listed are listed pretty high, 50, 100, $150. Um, I mean, I'll list it for, you know, I'll probably list it for like 75 bucks. They have these really cute zippers on the sleeves too. Um, and it may not sell in the US, but maybe it will, I don't know. 
Ooh la la. I always get anything that says made in Italy, made in France, made in Portugal, Portugal made in France, Spain. Eh? You definitely want to look up the tags. Anything that's made in Europe is generally made better and uh, is usually designer. So, je ne sais quoi. Jacques Cousteau. All right, please stop. All right, here's my last one. I don't know this brand at all. I uh, probably paid like two or three dollars for it. It's made of, what's the, what is it? Rayon, 100% Rayon, made in the USA. Um, let me show the tag. Made in the USA. This is what the actual brand is. Um, I can't see it because it's backwards on the screen. Uh, Couture Collection. Couturier Collection? I don't know, Couturier Collection. Interesting. I don't know, what would you date this? Would you think this is like 80s or? Yeah, 80s, early 90s. Um, but it's just a rayon shirt, but I love the pattern. I think yeah, the pattern's pretty hideous. The pattern's super funky, and some would say hideous, some would say very interesting. You know what? I would have seen that on at least 10 people at the Jinx Monsoon show the other night. <laughs> apparently, very loud pattern rayon shirts. Print shirts are, are huge right now. Super apparently. huge, especially with the gay community, because it was every gay man was wearing something like this, which I guess that's a new style because let's say we're fashion, you know, fashion forward. And so, but I got this before the show. So I guess I know you. what is up in the fashion community. I love it. Right, please stop that. Please stop. <laughs> All right. So this is my last thing. I did grab this at the bins. This is one that does not have a belt and I'm not going to try to improvise this belt with a ribbon. It just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. This is a very heavy sixties, vintage sixties or seventies wool robe. Now, again, I don't know who wears this stuff because it's so scratchy. I can't imagine wanting to wear this around the house, but a robe, in this case, because it's got this weird lapel and the pockets, I, call, I would call this a robe slash smoking jacket. Uh, it has the shawl collar. It's wool, it's plaid. This is the tag. It's by a brand called Lord. Doesn't really mean a heck of a lot. Is it Lord uh, Jeff? It is not <laughs> Lord Jeff. It is just Lord. Um, Anyway, uh, I can't tell where it's from, but it's definitely vintage 60s, maybe early 70s. It is dirty, so I'm gonna try to, it's wool, so I'm not going to like wash it in the washing machine, but I think I may have to hand wash it in the bathtub and then let it air dry just to get the dirt out. Uh, you can hand wash wool, just don't dry it. If you don't dry it in the dryer, it won't shrink. Um, I've done it with Pendleton blankets. So with the whole, like that, but. with the whole like wool robe thing, at the time it was popular, like men would wear like the full on pajama suit. Right. It had like the button, like my grandpa wore them, like yeah. the button down, long sleeve, long pants. Yep. And then they'd wear a robe over it. Right. And it's, so to me it was like more about the warmth of it. I think it's because not everybody would have heat on, in every room in their mm -hmm. house. Yeah. And especially where you lived, you would be, you know, you'd wear socks to bed, you'd wear long, long johns to bed, you know, depending on, I mean, we're not talking like Laura Ingalls Wilder, but depending on where you lived, even in New England, where I'm from, in the winters it was really cold and a lot of times you would just have the wood stove in one central room and then the bedrooms would be cold. Yeah. So a lot of people would do that, space heaters and things like that. Please don't use space heaters. I feel like people don't unsafe. use robes as much anymore. Well, I mean, we also live in Las Vegas. Well, that's true too. too. I, I wear a robe in the winter occasionally when yeah. I get up because it's cold, but very rarely. I always like to wear the one at the hotel, um, in our hotel room. Oh, she gets so mad if there's only one robe in the hotel room. <laughs> I don't know why, because I don't wear she it. She won't wear it, but I'm like, come on, like, why wouldn't you put two robes in there? But like when I was growing up, my dad's uh, my dad's standard robe was like a um, blue terry cloth robe. Yeah, and we bought around. him a new one for Christmas. What was, yeah, what, what was your, did you, when you were little, do you remember like your dad and your grandpa having a robe and what it looked like. No, I remember my grandpa wearing the pajamas that you're talking about, but I don't remember my dad wearing a robe. Yeah. My, my dad, mom always did. My dad would also just wear his tidy whitey, so it's like it'd be the middle of the night, he'd come out and be like in his little tidy whitey. I didn't need to know that. I didn't need to know that. Thanks. I didn't need to picture Tom in his tidy whiteys. I'm good. Yeah. All right. That's everything, guys. That was uh, that was the highlights of what we were able to pick up in, in California. I mean, you pretty much saw almost everything that we got. I think there were only a handful of things that we didn't show. Um, but yeah. So happy to bring you guys a little bit of content. Today um, is Friday. I'll probably put this up today. Um, and then we actually uh, went to the bins this morning and we just before we recorded this, we recorded another video. So probably early next week, maybe Monday, we'll put that video out, but we recorded them all on the same day. That's why we apparently like to wear the same clothes every day. It will appear when you watch the next video, you'll be like, that's quite odd. But um, <laughs> yes, yeah, sickos. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Have a nice weekend. Bye.
We're going to double on down in the doggy hotel, the doggy cave. You're hitting Grizz right in the face with your tail, Luna. Grizz, that's terrible. That's horrible. And then single occupancy cave for the Ripley.